okay, I, I believe you can mount a C9 and a quarter on this thing. Do I know for they put C8 sure you can. This. You can put a C11 on this thing so and use it visually. I don't know that I would image with it visually with a C11, but they did do it at Celestron. This is a fact in the observatory without any wind touching it, and they got really nice little... Uh, All right, so, are we ready? Accurate. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen. Are we on right now? Yeah, we're on. We're going to be... Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to telescopeside.net. Whoops, let me stay in the field here. It looks like I'm out of the field. Are you out of the field? Or are you no, 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 field? we're in. We're in. We're in. We have the mount in the field? Yeah, yeah we got it. It's on that one. We there. have so the... the ladies, right which here. one am I talking to? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Telescopes.net. My name is Daniel Mounty, a.k.a. Dr. D, your host. Ah. We got Simon Tang. Yes, I am the stupid astronomer because I do the stupid thing so he doesn't have to. I'm the smart astronomer, and I don't know how that goes. But we are here to talk about Celestron BX Mountain. We think it's just really cool. It is the most affordable mount in its weight class, meaning the weight that it can carry. Yep. Which is, how much would you say this thing's going to carry, roughly? Would you I say would so? actually put this in the realm of around about 30 pounds. It can easily hold that. I mean, I've seen people put C8s on this thing and still fly around all over the sky. I mean, yes, you will have to get an extra counterweight because it comes by default with, I think it's just an 11 pound counterweight, but it's actually more than enough to get you started. What about a nine? I think we can put a nine and a quarter. And I know the guys at Celestron had even imaged in the observatory, this is a fact, with a C11. Right. You know, but I wouldn't recommend, you know, Imaging with a C11 out in the field to get a little gust of wind and get a little bit of shakes there and whatnot. Cool database, handset, yep. and uh, you can use this, uh, the uh, what yes, is sky you can, portal. Yeah, you can use the sky portal, you can use the uh, auto align. It actually Star has uh, the two auxiliary ports on the side here, mm -hmm. obviously where you can plug the hand controller in and the auto guider port itself. Okay, so we've also got here, if you're wondering what this is, it's actually the declination port. Um, because it's actually not wired internally, this can actually swing round and round in all different directions, and it will never tangle up. You can just keep spinning this thing so no binding forever. There, There's no like. binding up. I mean, obviously, you've only got the limitation of however long this particular cord is. Mm -hmm. And in terms of imaging, I mean, you can go past the meridian like there's no tomorrow on this thing, obviously, until it hits the size, you know, side of the telescope or the, the legs. And you can use Sky Portal. You can use Sky Portal, you can use SkyFi, you can use SkyQ Link, you can use Stella from Mead. Oh, so many things work on this system. Um, on the newer style hand pads, they actually have the USB. This one actually has the older style RJ11 port. Um, ah. Yeah, that's right. The new ones are USB, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, but again, you can still plug in your computer and control it remotely, or you could do all the crazy things like reprogram the pad, add new objects to the database when they come out with them. So. Let's talk about some of the functionality. Well, um, the thing I wanted to tell you about is the saddle plate is a V-style plate because most of the, or V-style saddle, because most of the telescopes that you would use with this type of uh, mount in this weight class is a V-style plate, so to speak. So this is a V-saddle, not a D. Correct. So there, I guess you could use Rayox with this if you wanted to. Yes, Rayox, um, if you saddle haven't plate. heard about the Rayox uh, saddle plate, uh, Steve Pizzo can have all different adapters and you can just screw directly onto this Vixen plate and just attach it on top and then it all clips together and you have a full uh, D-style, Lozmandy style plate system. Yeah, that's really cool. You could do that. Um, you got your altitude adjustments here and, and one of the things uh, different from this on the CG, older CG5 GT is that you really have uh, knobs that are easy to adjust the altitude and the azimuth for your polar alignment, these provisions here. So it's just absolutely wonderful mount. It's great, it's portable. Right. There is now an optional sure. case, which is very cool. Now it's hiding over there. Yes, but we actually have gentlemen, it. Well, we're gonna bring over that case so you can see it because we think it's really cool. Now, I, I didn't even know about the darn thing. I found out. I mean, how cool is that? The foam, the existing foam that comes out of the box goes directly into the canvas type material case. And then you can put your, your uh, mount head in there. How cool is that? Right. I mean, the great thing here is the AVX series follows along with the CGX and the CGXL design as well as the CGE Pro, the modernization behind it. And, you know, again, they still keep the provision for the polar scope, just go straight in there, and then you would look out the other end, or you could use the Pole Master attachment and do some even more accurate. Let me get the polar scope. Polar Sorry about alignment. that. We actually have a polar scope somewhere. Polar scope coming up. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Okay, so the polar scope gets inserted into the backside of the mount back inside here and just screws right inside there and you're ready to rock. And the cover goes on, you can just keep the polar scope on there permanently all you like. Yeah. And you're ready to rock. How is that? 
Now, I have a question, Simon. Yes. If they want to use the Star Sense, they're going to take their Star Sense hand controller and put it on there. I just want to make that yes, clear. Yes, that is true. So when you use the Star Sense Auto Align, um, you actually remove the handset and place the new one in its place because you have to use the Star Sense hand controller. Um, right. Again, it's actually very, very simple, very, very intuitive system, and it does exactly what it says. Does auto align. It does. How long does the process take once you have it all calibrated? Because I understand you have to align it first. Well, you, see, you have to calibrate so it first. So let, let's just assume we've calibrated it for the first time use out of the box and everything. But once we set it up, believe it or not, it only takes the time for you to make a cup of tea. And by the time you get back, it'll be done. Cup of tea in Great Britain. So Is that the, correct? That's correct. So now average... We, we drink coffee here well, in America. Well, you drink coffee. Well, you're yeah. on my turf. Now, on, when you're drinking tea, <laughs> it takes approximately <laughs> three Bloody minutes. Bloody tea, ladies three and gentlemen. Minutes Bloody tea. To make a cup of tea. And in this guy's case, if it takes three minutes for him to make a cup ladies, of coffee... Ladies, bring over the tea. We're in trouble. So, <laughs> Sorry. Just to give you an idea of the portability, I want to show you how light this thing actually is. I'm actually picking this up. Very cool. It's it is so magical. light. It, it's so simple. It's lighter than the CGE Pro? <laughs> yes, the CGE Pro. Take it from a Pro. man of experience who has a CGE Pro. I, mean, yeah, I can just, assure you he can The help. counterweight on the CGE Pro is just as heavy as this. Yeah. Just a counterweight. Now, if you were going to do imaging, because a lot of people want to ask if we're doing imaging with a mount like mm -hmm. this, what uh, would, in your opinion, what would you start out with? Do you have any recommendations yes. for our people? So, Consumer base? Here's the thing about the AVX. Because it's so portable, it's actually ideal for people who want to do astro imaging or get into the astro imaging. However, um, I do not recommend you know, somebody buying a great big scope and trying to put this on there. Mm -hmm. So the best situation here is nothing more than a 104. Um, mm -hmm. Of some description, I mean, Spore Scientific makes some great 104s. Uh, Celestron themselves. You mean even the Spore Scientific 102? Oh, the 102, yep. Yep. And then um, um, Celestron actually has their own 100 ED. Again, works fantastic with this particular system. What else can we do? I mean, we can do the Max Suit of Cassegrain. Prima Lucy Lab. I mean, I've seen people put Newtonians on here. Really? Six to eight inch Newtonians, imaging Newtonians, that is, not just regular yeah. ones, Ooh, imaging ones. ones. And fives. they perform exceptionally well. Yeah, and then if you're going to use a Newtonian, you'd have to have your tripod extended uh, all the way down. All the way down. Yeah. So, you know, because the tube's going to be up here, and if you use a refractor, any opinion? You can, know, you can have here. as high up as you want. I mean, yeah. the refractors are so well balanced anyway, there's very little messing around with them, and this mount is made for that purpose. Do you have any opinions as far as if a, a person wants to image with a refractor versus an SCT? Are there attributes to both or well, any opinions you'd like to share for our audience? Right, so realistically, um, if you're doing imaging, if this is your first time you know, beginning doing all that kind of stuff, I would recommend a refractor by any means. And don't just run out and buy the largest refractor. Um, a lot of the times you're going to start finding is a lot of people like using the short foc uh, focal lenses, like the uh, Explore Scientific AT ED. I mean, mm -hmm. that thing has such a great wide field, 430 millimeter focal length, I think it was. I mean, this thing knocks the socks off of anything I've seen in a long, long time. I mean, when you want to go like some of the crazier sizes, again, on this particular mount, you don't want to go anything bigger than a 102. You can get away with a 127, but that's more visual. Um, the tracking on this particular thing is I think it's like under six arc seconds. I yeah, mean, it's reasonable. It's reasonable, but very reasonable. See, yeah. So, but when you're using a smaller scope, you know, it doesn't mass, matter anymore. I mean, it just tracks and it just holds it. I mean, I've used the older CG5 version of this, and that thing would still beat the socks off of some of the things that are out there. And that's mm. the CG5, the original. Right. And right. this is the upgrade of it, obviously. It is. It's got more features on it, and it's a more solid mount, and it's still relatively portable. So I really like that. So I mean, if you know, yeah, it comes with that bag or you know, yeah, the I like the wag. case. I think the I mean, case is cool. Just brilliant. Yeah, that is a really brilliant idea. And you can put the accessories in the top. There's a compartment on one side inside here to put your handset, yep. things of that sort. So highly recommended. I can't think of anything else. We yeah. No. So if you have any more questions, Daniel will give you the phone number. Call us toll free at eight 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 four two seven eight seven six six and ask for Doctor D. That's me. And you can also call me. I'm always at the store too. Don't forget, the stupid astronomer. Yes, because I do the stupid things so you don't have to. Come see us, ladies and gentlemen. We're happy to assist you anytime, anywhere, anyplace, anytime, ladies and gentlemen. Come see us. 888-427-8766. Dr. D out.
Uh, if you're wondering what this is, that's the actual declination cable, as they call it. It is an external feature, which does actually mean, and we can demonstrate this, this thing can turn round Ow. and round oh. and round and round and round. And we can kill Daniel with it, too. 